ಗೂಢಚರ್ಯ ಆರೋಪದಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾಕಿಸ್ತಾನ ಬಂಧಿಸಿರುವ ಭಾರತೀಯ ನೌಕಾಪಡೆ ಮಾಜಿ ಅಧಿಕಾರಿ ಕುಲಭೂಷಣ್ ಜಾಧವ್ ಪ್ರಕರಣದ ವಿಚಾರಣೆ ಅಂತಾರಾಷ್ಟೀಯ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಲಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಆರಂಭವಾಗಿದೆ ಅಂತಾರಾಷ್ಟೀಯ ವ್ಯಾಜ್ಯಗಳ ಪರಿಹಾರಕ್ಕೆ ರಚನೆಯಾದ ಐಸಿಜೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಭಾರತದ ವಕೀಲ ಹರೀಶ್ ಸಾಳ್ವೆ ವಾದ ಮಂಡಿಸುತ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರತಿಯಾಗಿ ನಾಳೆ ಪಾಕಿಸ್ತಾನ ಪರ ವಕೀಲ ಖಾವರ್ ಖುರೇಶಿ ವಾದ ಮಂಡಿಸಲಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಂತರ ಫೆಬ್ರವರಿ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತಕ್ಕೆ ಭಾರತ ತನ್ನ ನಿಲುವು ಸ್ಪಷ್ಟಪಡಿಸಲಿದೆ ಬಳಿಕ ಫೆಬ್ರವರಿ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೊಂದಕ್ಕೆ ವಿಚಾರಣೆ ಅಂತ್ಯಗೊಂಡು ತೀರ್ಪು ಪ್ರಕಟಗೊಳ್ಳುವ ಅಥವಾ ಕಾಯ್ದಿರಿಸುವ ಸಾಧ್ಯತೆ ಇದೆ ಗೂಢಚರ್ಯ ಮತ್ತು ಭಯೋತ್ಪಾದನೆ ಆರೋಪದ ಮೇರೆಗೆ ಜಾಧವ್ ಅವರನ್ನ ಪಾಕಿಸ್ತಾನದ ಸೇನಾ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಲಯ ಎರಡ್ ಸಾವಿರದ ಹದಿನೇಳರ ಏಪ್ರಿಲ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಮರಣ ದಂಡನೆಗೆ ಗುರಿಪಡಿಸಿತ್ತು ಇದನ್ನ ಪ್ರಶ್ನಿಸಿ ಭಾರತ ಐಸಿಜೆ ಮೆಟ್ಟಿಲೇರಿದೆ ಎರಡ್ ಸಾವಿರದ ಹದಿನೇಳರ ಮೇ ಹದಿನೆಂಟರಂದು ಐಸಿಜೆಯ ಹತ್ತು ಸದಸ್ಯರ ನ್ಯಾಯಪೀಠ ವಿಚಾರಣೆ ಅಂತ್ಯಗೊಳ್ಳುವವರೆಗೂ ಜಾಧವ್ ಮರಣ ದಂಡನೆಗೆ ತಡೆ ನೀಡಿ a statement made by the honorable minister for external affairs in parliament in india sets out india's position in the matter and i shall refer to it in the chronology for maintaining simplicity in my narrative i shall use the word arrest without accepting the lawfulness of his detention on 25th march 2016 india was informed of this so called arrest when the foreign secretary raised the matter with the indian high commission in islamabad pakistan issued a demarche indicate making allegations of an illegal entry of a raw officer and his alleged involvement in subversive activities on that very day in 25th march 2016 india sought consular access to jadhav pakistan notified the p5 states of his arrest on that very day and created a 12 page document making allegations against india it publicly aired a video that purported to be a recording of a so called confession by jadhav some significant facts emerge from this document produced by pakistan it states that security forces apprehended jadhav it's a fair assumption that he has continued since his detention in the custody of pakistan's security forces The document doesn't indicate the date of his apprehension it mentions first week of march 2016 it states that quote the agent has confessed unquote it is obvious that soon after his arrest and in the custody of security forces the confession was extracted information subsequently made available by pakistan establishes that a first information report the acronym for which in india and in pakistan is fir under the pakistan code of criminal procedure 1898 was registered as late as 8 april 2016 and that under the <coughs> code marks the commence and under the code the fir marks the commencement of an investigation into a crime but the confession obtained on 25th march 2016 before the fir was used as a propaganda measure and its paraphrase finds place in the document circulated to the p5 countries the document notes that this gentleman had been operating as a businessman in jahabahar it alleges jadhav crossed over from iran to baluchistan and the document alleges he is a commander in the indian navy he concludes it concludes by making serious allegations against india of state sponsored terrorism and of repeating it efforts of 1971 in baluchistan you will be surprised to find despite all this towards the end of their mem- counter memorial one of the defenses is that india has not established his nationality there is no manner of doubt that pakistan <clears throat> was using this as a propaganda tool Pakistan was bound to grant consular access without delay. India's request for access did not evoke any response. In para 9 of its memorial, India asserts that Pakistan's conduct suggests that even Jadhav was not informed of his right to consular access, and this is not contradicted in the counter memorial. On 30th March 16, India reminded Pakistan of its request for consular access and received no reply to its communication. 13 reminders were sent by india on various dates and i will deal with them in my narrative 
Pakistan acknowledges that as early as 30 March 2016, the Indian High Commission in Islamabad sent a note verbal to Pakistan's Minister of Foreign Affairs requesting consular access. Pakistan obviously had no difficulty in Bharata Vadavana Ivatu Mandastai, the Avritia Danta Vandu Vada Mandane, Agidanta Rashtri and Yala Yadalianta. Just like the Vandukade, Puluama, the Lina Danta Dali, Matondukade, you were to from Kovaki, Pakistan, the Bandana, the Lita, Kulbush Jada, Kulbush and Jada, or Andima Vicharane, and Narita, Netherlands, Hague, International Court, Nalina Ditaranta Vicharane. From Kovaki, you were to Vicharane, Barta, the Vadavana, Madnamad, the Paketa, Kilragiranta, Ristadero. Already, you are part of the Wadawana, Court Namunde, Nadish from the Mandana Marta, he our Wada the Le Promukovagi, Pakistan, a Madiwanta, the Skutia, Hako Pakistan, a Maidwanta, Shatan, the Baki, we were a Waki, we were a Stare. Promukovagi, Murgantegala Kala, you are Harish Salve, Wada Madlika, Okashito, you are a Wadawana, Paragan and Getagon Nantra, Nale, non Sala Pakistan, or Wadawana, Alice Lagata, Pakistan of Pativada. Alice Lanantra, Nadito Matondo, Sutina Wada, Pratiwada, Yerdukura Nadu. Ipatunetariko is the Tirpo Horabila Telekita, really Tirpinali and Agute and Teledre, Iga Pakistan, Wada Marta Bandiro, the Nan Teledre, Kulbushan Jatavo, Namalibando, Gudachere on Namadidro, Spai Ritikel Samadi, Bartakil in the Maiti and Aravana Marta is on Telbit, Hilter of the Pakistana. Other Ritikapatiagi, Namaya Bartha, the Wakil Rukuda, Bartha, the Wada in on Teledre, Kulbushan Jatu, the Wonder Lesene and Abitidro, Nokas. Padelitro, other airs of Donrele, Nokapada and the Nurti Hondidro, other Nantra or businessmen like Kelsa Martaidro, as under the Lairs or the Hadna Rale Yavaga, Iran Gehok, the Kulbushan Jado, as under the Lay, March, Murnetareku, Iran Nale, Kulbushan Jadawana, kidnap Madidare, Anantra, Linda, Pakistan, Kakarkon, Hogidara and Telputo, Barat the Wada, other Nantra in the Airs of the Yoldra May, Airs of the Hadnodu May, Hadnan Trando. Kulpushan Jada, okay, Marana than a Shikshana with this to Pakistana. Either Nantra, Pakistan, a Shiksha with this is the Nantra, Barata, Melman, and Nasal Situ, International Court Nale. Ah, Hindale, Avagle, which are an the court, Ibagan, and Sudirgo, Wada Pativadana, and Mandis in the Pito, Kala Koshana Koto, Yvotin in the Vicharana, Kaikit to Kondida. And the other Yvot, Harish Salve, and Nadaswanta, Wada. Nala Madisalirwa or a Prativada, Pakistan, the Paragi, Croatia, and Telva Kilre, no Prativada on a Mandis there, Ah Prativada, Nantara Nadi, the Putna Tariko, and no Yerdu, Wada Prativada, Barata, Pakistan, the Yerdu, the Shida, Wada Prativada on Alice, the Nantara, International Court, Nadi Shuru, Ipatone Tariki, Yen, Tirpu Nidare, Atu Tirpan and Nid, the Tirpana Kaidir Sara, and Adrumale Kutuhala Niti Likita. Okay, then you are the Dixit Mahitikagi. of November 2016. On 19th December 2016, India sent a seventh reminder to Pakistan for consular access. But there was again no response. On 2nd January 2017, the advisor to the Prime Minister, Mr. Sartaz Aziz, wrote to the Secretary General of the United Nations, stating that the law enforcement agencies had apprehended an agent of Indian intelligence and that Jadav had made a confessional statement admitting his involvement in, quote, activities aimed at destabilizing Pakistan, unquote. It went on to add that the arrest of Kulbushan Jadav in his confessional statement has vindicated Pakistan's long-standing position that India is involved in activities at destabilizing Pakistan. invited the United Nations and its bodies to open court, play their role in restraining India from these activities." Unquote. On 23rd January 17, Pakistan sent a note verbal without seeking assistance in what they call the investigation of a case registered in the FIRs 6 of 2016 of 8th April and 22 of 2016 of 6 September in police station CTD Baluchistan against Indian National. The letter of assistance that was attached stated that during the process of investigation and interrogation, Jadav had revealed the name of his so-called handlers, and it sought India's assistance in obtaining statements of high functionaries and other named officials of the Indian Naval Service. Surprisingly, it also sought assistance in obtaining the evidence of Jadav's wife. It sought assistance in coercive steps, such as searching Jadav's house, 
a certified record of his cell phone for the last 10 years and certified copies of his bank accounts in his and his family's name. It attached a number of documents such as the first information report, etc. On 3rd February, India, by its note verbal, reminded Pakistan for the eighth time of its request to provide immediate consular access. It expressed concern over the continued denial of consular access and about Jadav's treatment in Pakistan custody. We said especially about his coerced purported confession and the circumstances of his presence in Pakistan, which remain unexplained. It appears that the trial was concluded on 12th February 2017. India sent a ninth remand on 3rd March 2017 for consular access. On 21st March 2017, Pakistan replied to the communication of 3rd March, stating that the case for consular access of Bhushan Jadav shall be considered in the light of India's side's response to Pakistan's request for assistance in investigation process and early dispensation of on 12th February 2017. On 31st March 2017, India replied to Pakistan's communication of 21st March 2017, pointing out that consular access would be an essential prerequisite to verify the facts and understand the circumstances of Jadav's presence in Pakistan, and for the 10th time requested immediate consular access. A press release was issued by the Inter-Services Public Relations Pakistan on 10th April 2017, which announced that Jadav had been tried by the FGCM under the Pakistan Army Act and awarded the death sentence. And that on that day, the Chief of Army Staff had confirmed the death sentence awarded to him. It stated that, quote, the accused was provided with defending officer as per legal provisions, unquote. No lawyer. Pakistan, by its communication of 10th April 2017, responded to India's note verbal of 31st March 2017 repeating that the case for consular access shall be considered in the light of India's response to Pakistan's request for assistance in the investigation process, which was pending with the Indian side. India responded by its note verbal on the same date protesting that despite repeated requests, access had not been permitted and pointed out that in any event, the offer of consular access after his death sentence had been awarded and confirmed appeared farcical. A statement was made in the Indian Parliament by the Honorable External Affairs Minister on 11th April 2017, setting out the position of the Government of India. The statement described him as a kidnapped Indian and a victim of a plan that seeks to cast aspersions on India to deflect international attention from Pakistan's well-known record of sponsoring and supporting terrorism. On 14th April 2017, the advisor to Pakistan's Prime Minister on Foreign Affairs, Mr. Sartaz Adish, issued his press statement. The statements of significance to the present case are as follows. First, he said Jadhav, quote, is serving commander of the Indian Na Navy and working with Indian intelligence agency RAW, unquote, was apprehended on 3rd March 2016 after he illegally crossed over into Pakistan from the Saravan border in Iran. He said he was tried by the field court Field General Court Martial under Section 59 of the Pakistan Army Act and under three of the Official Secret Act. Jada was provided with a legal counsel in accordance with our provisions of law, he said. He said Jadav confessed before a magistrate and the court that he was tasked by Indian intelligence agency RAW to plan, coordinate, organize espionage and sabotage activities aimed at destabilizing and waging war against Pakistan. Unsurprisingly, the court found Jadav guilty, as it has found many others. The espionage case against Jadav was tried by the FGCM and concluded under the Pakistan Army Act and the Official Secret Act. His sentence for espionage was endorsed on 10th April 2017. The steps which, as per this press statement, were taken to ensure transparency were his confessional statement was recorded before a magistrate under 164 of the CRPC. This was, of course, much after his first confession had already been aired to the world. 
A law qualified field officer was provided to defend him throughout the court proceedings. A statement of witnesses was recorded under oath in the presence of the accused. And in the court, Jadhav was allowed to ask questions from the witnesses. During the trial, a fully qualified law officer of the Judge Advocate General branch remained a part of the court. It went on to assert, and something which will be relevant for the final relief, that all political parties are unanimous that the award of death penalty awarded to a foreign spy is the correct decision. The whole nation is solidly united against any threat to Pakistan's security. On 14th April 2017, India sought consular access for the 14th time and also sought certified copies of charge sheet and the judgment of the military court. These have not ever been furnished by Pakistan. On 19th April 2017, the Government of India again requested the Government of Pakistan for handing over certified copies of the charge sheet proceedings of the Court of Inquiry. They were requested to share the procedure for appeal to the relevant court to facilitate the appointment of a defence lawyer, to facilitate the contact with the High Commissioner, High Commission of India in Islamabad, and to issue appropriate visas to family members to travel to Pakistan. For the 13th time, Pakistan was again requested to provide consular access. On 20th April 2017, a spokesperson for Pakistan held a press briefing in which he mentioned, quote, regarding consular access, we have said earlier also that we have a bilateral agreement on consular access. And according to Article 4, in all such cases, as the one of Commander Kulbushan, the request of the, this nature would be decided on the basis of merits, unquote. This statement by the spokesperson is not reflected in any of the communications sent by Pakistan to India. On 26th April 2017, India handed over an appeal and a petition on behalf of the mother of Jadhav for being filed with the concerned authorities in Pakistan. On 27th April, the Honorable Minister, External Affairs Minister of India wrote to, a letter to the advisor to the Prime Minister of Pakistan requesting him for certified copies of the charge sheets, proceedings of the Court of Inquiry, summary of evidence, judge, judgment, etc. No reply was received to this letter. It was in these circumstances that India made its application on 8th May, making a request for indication of provisional measures. On 18 May, this court made the order indicating the provisional measures. <clears throat> 